everyone. Hello, Hello and welcome to Ladies Tale Podcast. Right? Where where we actually attempt to behave. <laughs> I know, I'm Jay. <laughs> and I'm Wilnona. We do attempt, y'all. I mean, it is, if you have been hanging in there with us, I know y'all have, and it has been um, a very, I'll be like, what's going on with not funny at the beginning? What's, what's happening with the professionals? I, we don't know. It says ladies, and then it says tales. And we don't want to show our tail, so we're being greedy. <laughs> okay, sure. All right, well, Nona, all right. And with, and with, and that, with that, we'll just we talk, move on. We'll just talk about what we have going on so no one has to hear our corny jokes anymore. Oh, my goodness. Oh, was that that corny? Yeah. Well, no. Oh, my goodness. Well, Nona, yeah. It's we okay. It. It's, it's okay. So we um wrote the And I Thought series and the Misfit yeah. Guide series. And, and I, I think for this Apparently, one, like, the manager series. Like, we just... Yeah. Okay, we just can't get keep away from our, our computers, and it's sad. Hold on. Before we get finished, I want to say this. And uh, we wrote, go figure, since, you know, we have this out today, the Ladies' Tale series. You know, yeah. since you're on the Ladies' Tale just, podcast. Just, you know, it didn't come out of nowhere. It was really a thing. So, uh, you can check out everything your ladies are doing. And we do the 25 hottest and the authors, artists, and advocate. You can check out everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. We have a lovely co-host with us today. And because, this, so, this is how you know it's a serious person. There's a co-host. Yes, this is a co-host. <laughs> and it's Tanya Todd. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I am Tanya Todd. I'm an author and actress from Las Vegas. I'm also a screenwriter and the education chair for Henderson Writers Group. Yes. Fabulous. And Miss Tanya Todd is making my dreams come true because I'm getting managers at the podcast, which you can also check out on like number one of this and then probably like number seven or eight of this podcast. <laughs> So too, but y'all aren't here to hear Everybody about us no. go on and on about our lives. No, no one cares. No. And you're here to hear from our wonderful guest. Wonderful guest, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, yeah, my name's Chrissy, and I'm in England. I'm an actress and comedian, and also wrote a few books as well. Oh, you have to tell us about the book. I know, right? You have to start with that. <laughs> um, the book I wrote was um, "The Heart Within Me Burn." It was an autobiography of my life, and um, it went to um, the top 10 in Amazon, still there after all these years. 10 years ago, I wrote it. Um, that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, that, yes. That's amazing. That's a feat. Yeah, this is. Would you, would you like to uh, swap your wonderful success for our mediocre success? <laughs> 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 oh, no. No, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> You worked hard for your success. And that actually segues into our first question. What? We're doing segues on this? High Woo! five, social distance style. So how is it that you can, that you've accomplished so much? Um, well, I just feel blessed coming into acting because I got into acting by coincidence, really. Um, I just started becoming a comedian and then they were doing auditions for a film. And people like me didn't make films, you know, not, because we grew up watching Hollywood movies, you know, and seeing all these glamorous people. And people like us, because I was from um, a rough part of Liverpool. So, I mean, I couldn't read or write till I was 27. Oh, wow. So, I mean, that thing, I just feel blessed that I just went for an audition for Then you film. wrote a book. You couldn't read or write till you were 27 and you wrote a book. Yeah, well, I wrote a book later on in life because um, I was, I, I wrote the book. If you read it and you've heard my voice, it's like I'm talking to you. It's not like, cause I'm very bad at grammar and I'd love to do more books, but I'm not very good on word power, so. I think you need to Is there an audio me. version of your book? No, but I could get an audio version of it. I'd like to do an audio version, you know, because it's a long time. I'm I'm thinking of writing another book called Third Time Lucky because the book starts where I'm from a rough area in Liverpool and um, me and my brother were sexually abused as kids. And then I went on to an abusive marriage and then I thought that's all I was worth. So everything was in the book from start to finish. And now forgiveness made me get better. 
And breaking because, the chains of that abuse. Yeah, because I was a prisoner of my own memories. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, well, there's only me holding on to it now. And I forgave the person who abused us by forgiving him. I forgive me, if that makes sense. Well, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Did you find it therapeutic to write the book? I've, I've, it was the best thing I've done. Got rid of all the ghosts. And um, I like to try and help people who've been abused as well, because it was the self-harming as well. I, but I mm-hmm. don't do none of that now. So, but it's all, I just wrote everything in the book. And people say, I've picked the book up and I couldn't put it down. I read it in a day, but it's warts and all, everything. Well, you had such a tragic upbringing, you know, your start was tragic. How did you turn that into bringing people joy by bringing laughter into their world? Because I know what it's like to be unhappy, to be sad, to be thinking things all the time. And instead of looking back that way, I can't change the past, but I can change my future. So I just, my coping mechanism was trying to be funny. Plus, I couldn't read properly, so that was another reason. And I was just like the joker of the pack. You know, I was five foot, scruffy, uh, wasn't lovely looking like all my mates. So I was like the run to the litter. So I had to have my own little thing going on. (laughs) So I was just the comic of the bunch. Well, you know, you say you're not lovely, but I watched part of an interview that you did and the first thing I noticed was how lovely your eyes are so don't ever think that you're not lovely oh thank you <laughs> but oh, you actually transitioned to something that I was going to ask you. you you said you found a way to make yourself laugh in a year like 2020 how how do you find ways to laugh I mean you just think to yourself you know I'm still alive even though I was stuck in, I was out twice a week, once to clap and once to put the bins out. So, <laughs> I got, you know, I got that way. But um, I just think how, you know, how lucky people are. You know, how lucky I am. You know, I'm not ill. I'm not, you know, people have lost the jobs. I lost mine as well, but it'll come back. You know, you just have to thank God that you're still alive. That's so- true. So oh, true. true. Oh, my because I, we have been talking about that recently. We've been talking about how to stay so positive. And one of the things, like you got up this morning and you, and I actually, it's sunny day here. So that's fabulous. I'm so excited <laughs> for like three days straight. So it's a sunny day. And you have to kind of think on the things that, that you have, not the things you not. See, the thing is when I get up of a morning, I think, what am I going to eat and what am I going to wear? That's the only two things I think about. And then after that, everything will fall into place. I don't like being around negative people because they bring me down. And Mm -hmm. I'd rather just stay clear of them and just think, hey-ho, bye. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. I was going to ask you, what are the three top type of advice that you have for people that are trying to to write books and be an actress and overcome what they're they're doing like what life has thrust upon them and how you overcame what are the three top things that you would say the thing is do what you want to do because one you enjoy it if you enjoy it and end up becoming getting money and becoming quite famous that is amazing you know, but the best thing is to do is to enjoy it. As long as you enjoy doing it, it doesn't matter about fame or fortune or fame. Just carry on doing it. And also for acting, I think that I'm a onesie. Do you know what onesies are? All in one pajamas. <laughs> so that is on the that's on the chair, and then I'm going to climb into that, and I'm going to be someone and I think what will they have in the pocket what will they have on the feet what have they eaten today so you transition into that person you can't go and live in the street and walk around looking fabulous because you will it wouldn't happen so 
I don't care about makeup, how I look. It's not about glitz and glamour for me. I'm a character actress. So I remember being in this part and the, 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 um, the makeup woman said, he doesn't want you to wear any makeup. And I went, and? He said, no, none. And I went, well, other than surgery, what can I do? So it's just like that, you know. So it, you just think, well, I'd just like to be as natural as possible. And I think the golden key of acting and action is to actually start believing you're that person. Start thinking, what would they have eaten that morning? What would they be wearing? What's in the pockets? What kind of shoes are they wearing? What kind of job have they got? If they haven't got a job, where do they live? So it, it's all them sorts of things that I like to, to make up. Does that sound apt? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. And I have always thought that that's how people got in, into um, acting. And I know sometimes I don't really write characters, but Winona, she does like actual genre, like fiction writing. I'm just a poet. But sometimes when she's trying to like, I'm beta reading her book, you know, I have to, I, I'm really trying to put on her character just so I can be like, hey, I think this is missing from your character because I couldn't put it on because you didn't, you didn't put it down. And I was just thinking today, actually, what you were saying, I was gonna be like, a writer does the same thing. They, they literally get introduced to their own character in their head and then they kind of figure out, well, what do they do? How do they move? And sometimes you actually see yourself when you're writing a, a scene, you start moving like the person would and you go, but what, what do you need that for? But you need that to be able to tell their story well. Which brings me to my next question that has absolutely no segue and nothing to do with acting. <laughs> Not a thing. Uh, <laughs> what is your proudest accomplishment and what do you hope to do in the future? Um, the, the best thing I've ever done was the film Lady Bird, Lady Bird. She played a battered wife and she had all the children taken off her and she was you know, the man who was bashing her up, he was worried about doing the scene. And I said, look, I trust you. And I just, <laughs> we just went for it. Because um, I wanted it to look real. I mean, I had a bit of a bang in my head and things like that, but I wanted it to look real. And um, I think that's the best thing I ever did. And I'd like to do something similar like that again, uh, later on. Um, I like. I'd like to write um, a, a a real serious piece, a dark piece, and I'd like to perform in that. But it's just getting the funding to do it all and things like that. So that's an interesting uh, thing about like. Wait, I love the line where you were like, "You said I trust you for that role." And honestly, before I met Tanya, I never. You watch TV and you go, oh, TV, that was lovely. It was a story. It felt true. You put me in a roller coaster and gave me emotion, but you don't recognize that there are actors there. And I mean, you do. I mean, obviously. You were like, okay, there are actors there, but you don't really like take them out of the character. You just like, okay, that's what they did. But um, how, how do you get such an emotionally intensive role? Well, really, what you've got to do. How important is that trust? Um. Well, the man who was beating me up, he used to be a boxer before he was an actor. So he knew. And all he said to me, if I trust him to, to come as close to me face and then let me knees go, and that, and then I trusted him and he pulled, punched and pulled back. But if you see the film, you actually think he's punched us, you know, and he just said, let your legs go. So the minute he went like that, I just hit the floor. But in acting, I'd like to do as as real as possible. I mean, I remember watching the burn and bed, and he's bashing it up, threw it in in the fire, and put it. And she's never had a hair out of place, and she had <laughs> lovely makeup on. I thought she's just been bashed all over the place, and she looks fabulous. We should so all be so lucky, right? <laughs> you know, I wanted it to look real. And well, you you did so well that you won an award for your first acting performance. I won um, Best Actress in Chicago, Best uh, Foreign Actress in Best Actress in Berlin, won the Silver Bear, 
Catalonia. Uh, loads, loads. Couldn't believe it myself. And How does that you feel about, for you just getting your start to have so many accolades right at the bat? Well, you just think, wow, you know. And because I wasn't um, used to acting and used to all this, you know, and it's just unreal. And then all these people are doing it. And then you turn around to say thank you when they've gone. And I learned a good lesson. What's that? You, never, you know, they they not because they like you, because it's their job to look after you. Mm. And have you read the word next? And the next one comes in, you're left in the corner. So remember that and don't take That's a valuable it. lesson. Yeah, don't take all this pomp and ceremony that that's how it's going to be for the rest of ever ever you know because they absolutely bend over backwards for you to treat you like royalty you light a cigarette and about 12 lighters go underneath and the minute it's over you drop like a hot scone you drop like a hot brick onto the next person so always remember that they're only doing the job they're not there because they like you they're there because they you have to look after you. <laughs> and you'll have to forgive me. I'm also an author and I write a lot of British characters. And just listening to you, it's like, oh, I am stealing that phrase. Drop like a hot scone. It's a hot potato here. So hot scone will work. <laughs> yes, 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 it will. I was, I was in love with the hot brick. I'm not going to lie. I was like, so, so <laughs> dropping somebody like a hot brick. I mean, that's, that's awesome. Um, I like it. Okay. Oh, I'd, I'd, love to read, I'd love to read one of our books. One of our books or her book? One of her books, yeah. All of, all of your books. I like reading. <laughs> all right, we can make that happen. I'm sorry, you're oh, going to be you? stuck with, with reading poetry. Just FYI for us. Like, sorry about that. We yeah. write poetry. So you're <laughs> stuck with that. <laughs> but Anya's books are amazing. And I can say that because I've read it. Yeah. Thank oh. you. Because <laughs> she let me be her beta reader. So. Her books are gonna be amazing. They are amazing. Oh, are they murder books or romance or what kind of books? <laughs> that's that's the problem. It doesn't fit into one genre. It's it's called Dark Beacon, which tells you it has an element of darkness, but it is still a love story that oh. has you know banter in it. So it's it's not a happy light book, but there are happy light moments in a yeah. in a dark world. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. And lots yeah. of romance. <laughs> yeah. But it's not a true romance because that gives you the promise of a happy ending and I never promise a happy ending. <laughs> no, we we'll have two endings. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Chrissy, not let's get back. Um, what are... I'm sorry, my, my brain just went. Like, it just dropped out of anyway. I think I smell food and my, my mind just went, ooh. Food. Yeah. So where can people find your book and more about you? Um, like your website, your IMDB, uh, where your book is sold. I had a question after you asked that. I know that's my roundup question, but I really want to ask one. I'd, I'm not very technical on things like that. So I could get my Sue, my manager, to send you all the information to get the book. Or I can see if I can get some books. But I, I'd like to do it on audio. Absolutely. So, but people can pick up your book online, like in Amazon, right? We can all buy your book yes. on Amazon. Yes. Fabulous. Yes. Now, where can we watch you act and be this realist actor that has gotten so many awards? Have you got YouTube? Absolutely. Yes. Well, get Lady Beard, Lady Beard by Ken Loach. Oh, what was it like working with him? Oh, amazing. He goes... Uh, oh, this is not looking good for her now. <laughs> now, what would you do? <laughs> <laughs> what would you do in this situation? That's how he worked, yeah. So he's a collaborative director? Yeah. And then he gives you a bit of script, and then the rest you'd have to just make up yourself. Just coincidentally, I have one of his movies here, I, Daniel Blake. I haven't watched it yet, but I have it sitting here from Netflix, and it's just a coincidence that we happen to be interviewing you today. <laughs> Oh, he's fabulous. He's done some really fabulous films um, like Poor Cow and Kathy Come Home and Kez. And he's done loads and loads of films, but he does it about 
real things. And this lady, she had all her children taken off her and oh, she was, you know, she was a bit, she shouldn't have got what she got. But um, it is hard hitting. It is, and, and there's a long line. Do you mind to ask her one more question before we Absolutely. wrap up? Just, Go ahead. We haven't had a comedian on the show that, at least not one that I've done. And so I wanted to ask you about actors like Lily Tomlin and Emma Thompson, Tom Hanks and Robin Williams. They're respected actors who started as comedians. How do you yeah. think stand-up prepared them for success with dramatic works? Um, I think because it gives you the confidence to be on the stage and to, to be a good comic, you've got to die. And you've never <laughs> lived until you've died. So... <laughs> That'd be <laughs> amazing. Right? <laughs> You've got to die on die and die, but you've never lived till you've died. So, you know, I remember going, well, what did they do right that I, then that I, I've done wrong? It's timing. And, and I think, you know, a lot of my, I like to do a thing about comedy because women comics, I'd, I'd love to do where you go across the ponds where you are, because mm -hmm. comedy started in your country. Do they don't laugh I mean? in England. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it, it started. Uh, we are go hysterical at your comics in this country, but if we go over, it doesn't quite hit home when America when you're in America and see an English comic. So um, an English comic has to adapt to the American vocabulary. Like you, you say funny, we say ass. Right. You know, we say. <laughs> They pantyhose. So, but when you come, when Americans come to England, I love American comedy. I absolutely, I love Rupi Goldberg, Woody Allen, all of the old comics. And um, what was her name? Um, Ma, oh, what was her name? Anyway, she was, she was one of the old black comics. Ma, what was her name? Ma something? Can't think. Brain's gone. Probably the rain. Well, well I, you were standing in the rain before this. You don't yeah. have. You don't have a reason to actually think. Yes, it is you're evening. Good. It is it evening. Is I where you are. After eight, you're good. Yeah, you're good. You're fine. Some, no one would think that sometimes I feel like I just waffle. <laughs> 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 well, we like to. Um, take this moment to thank you for coming on. I still uh, have a question. No, Walona, we are super over time. <laughs> We are over. Okay. I want to know her question. Oh, Just, yeah. Tanya, why are you a bad influence? Oh, fine. It's for your viewers. You're just teasing them. They, they want to know what the question is. <laughs> fine. Well, no, no. So the question I, I just wanted to know, what did you wear to the all the cere award ceremonies? And how did you pick? Because I can never pick. Well, um, I got um, a Bon Marsh. I got a lovely black dress for three ninety nine from Bon Marsh, and, <laughs> and a cardigan for the five. And then I thought I didn't realise that Bon Marsh meant cheap in <laughs> but it was nice. I enjoyed it. <laughs> As long as you look fab in anything, I mean, look at anything <laughs> fabulous in a bin bag. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as long I, as you look uh, fabulous, I, it doesn't it, matter how it much doesn't it costs. Matter how much it costs, it truly doesn't. Because I have had expensive dresses that I I have said, why have I spent this money? Oh, so yeah. Funny. When I could have literally paid a friend of mine to make me a dress for fifty bucks, and it would have been so much better than this dress. Wasn't it Tiffany Haddish? She was like, if I'm going to spend a lot of money on a dress, I'm wearing it all season. It's the same right. dress I'm wearing to every award show. Absolutely. 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 I've never taken them off. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I understand. I understand. Well, I guess now we are at the end of our podcast, but let's go with where can people find more about you? Your, your website. Your, your website, Tanya. My website is www.mistanyatodd.com. That's M-S, not Miss, Ms. Tanya Todd com. Okay. Fabulous. 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 <laughs> Can you tell us where what your website is? 
I have a go. <laughs> well, yes, you do. You have a website. You do. I got it. She does everything for me, honestly. <laughs> well, hey. Her website is www.chrissy-rock.co.uk. <laughs> Thank you. See, and this is why we have a time. You see, this is the thing. When you know that you are not, you, you do not do something well, the most important thing in the world to do, first of all, admit you don't do it well. Second of all, find someone that does do it well. So you think it look like you've done it well. Um, I think that means you did do it well. Absolutely. <laughs> and, that, and that is how you do things well. Jane, oh. let's do this well and wrap it up. Tell okay, can find out. you can find out everything your ladies are doing and the stories that they are writing on www.andwethought.com. And I don't know exactly. While I'll, you're there, will oh. you take a moment and go to the ladies tab and support the charities that we probably It's in the middle. I've actually in went back into the website and made them bigger so we can all see them. So they're just three, <laughs> you'll, you'll see them. And, and then lastly, least but not last. Least but not last? I don't, that's not how that's Last but not, <laughs> not least. Last but not least. There it is. There it is. We haven't had lunch, y'all. No, we haven't eaten all day, really. So, um, I'm not, I'm gonna yeah, make yeah, that say it. Go to the Lady Self Podcast on the homepage and listen to the first episode, which is actually managers. And if you want to hear how Chrissy gets managed ever so well, and her life is ever so wonderful being managed. You can hear her manager's uh, Sue, Sue, Sue Sheridan's Sheridan. episode, and it's called A Manager's Life. Not to be confused with actually managers, the pilot episode. All right, I think I'm done yeah, now. So, so let me try wrapping this up. So thank you for listening to the Ladies Tell podcast. Be alert to the stories around you because they can change your life. What do you guys think of that one? I don't know. Let us know. And bye. Thanks for listening. Thanks for having us. <laughs>